welcome to this video. Yeah, welcome to this video. I want to talk about something that I've been thinking a lot about recently, and I don't know if it's discussed in like normal Percy Jackson like community spaces, but I've been thinking about it a lot and I want to talk about it. But I'm going to talk about the parallels between Achilles and Patroclus and Clarice and Selina in Percy Jackson, The Last Olympian, the last book of the first Percy Jackson series. This parallel is very clear to anyone who has read both the Iliad and The Last Olympian, but I will give a short explanation of the situation that I'm going over. Just to recap, I know sometimes it's been a while for some people who haven't read Percy Jackson in a while. Also, spoilers for Percy Jackson and The Last Olympian. Like, like a lot of spoilers. A lot. You have been warned? Leave now. Okay, so at the end of- actually, it's more like the middle of The Last Olympian. A dragon shows up in New York and there's a prophecy that has said that only a child of Ares can kill it. The children of Ares, if you remember, slash if you don't know, were sitting out the battle of New York because they felt slighted by the Apollo cabin. The Apollo cabin and the Ares cabin were fighting over a chariot. Clarice thought that the Ares cabin deserved it, and the Apollo cabin thought that the Apollo cabin deserved it, and the Apollo cabin is in possession of the chariot. So that's the beginning of the comparison. The battle of New York is going poorly. The Draken is powerful and Percy Jackson getting tired from fighting it. Everyone's backed up to the Empire State Building. All of a sudden, when everyone is losing hope, Clarice shows up with the Ares cabin and all of her siblings, basically saving the day. Clarice fights the Draken but gets hit with the poison. Spit? Saliva? <laughs> um, they has like, like, poisonous, venomous, um, like, acidic spit, and basically the dragon spit it in Clarice's face. But then, the actual Clarice comes running into battle. Everyone is really confused, but the real Clarice kills the dragon, and there's like an emotional scene. Clarice, the real one, is very, very angry. Everyone realizes that the first Clarice who led the Ares cabin into battle is actually Selina Beauregard. Selina had stolen Clarice's armor and led the Ares cabin into battle. She saw it as the only way to get the Ares cabin to listen and to be able to win the Battle of New York. So the comparisons to the Iliad start at the beginning. The Iliad also can be read as a queer story. If you haven't seen my other video about Achilles and Patroclus and whether or not they're actually gay in the Iliad, check that out because I'm not gonna be discussing the fact of if Achilles and Patroclus were gay, I'm just going Yes, they were, they were in love and boyfriends. <laughs> in this comparison, Clarice is Achilles, Selina is Patroclus, the Draken is Hector, and the Chariot is Briarces. And the Apollo cabin is Agamemnon. <laughs> I remembered all of them. Clarice refuses to go into battle because she feels like her cabin deserves the Chariot, and the Apollo cabin won't give it to them. And so she just says, no, I'm not going to help you. And this is exactly what happens in the Iliad with Achilles and his war prize, Briarces. Achilles refuses to go into battle and refuses to let his army go into battle because Agamemnon took his war prize, Briarces, and refused to give it back. And Achilles said, I'm not going to go into battle until I have Briarces back. Continuing with Percy Jackson, the Battle of New York is not going well. They're losing terribly, the Draken is killing everyone, and the Draken can only be killed by a child of Ares. In the Iliad, similarly, the Greeks are all dying. They're losing the Trojan War. This is where the comparison deviates a little bit, because in the Iliad, Achilles gives Patroclus permission to wear his armor into battle and lead the men into battle, whereas in Percy Jackson, Selina steals Clarice's armor and tricks the Ares cabin into following her into battle. So in the Iliad, Patroclus goes into battle, succeeds for a while at being a good warrior, and then in the end gets killed by Hector. 
And Achilles gets his revenge a few days later with a very chilling monologue that we will go over a little bit later. Now, in Percy Jackson, the events happen in a much quicker succession. Selina is killed by the Draken, and right away, Clarice steps in and defeats the Draken. The rage between Clarice and Achilles in the Sansons is similar, and I'm going to read a quote, two quotes, one from Percy Jackson, one is Clarice, and one from the Iliad, that one is Achilles. And before we start that, I just want to say, the Iliad is not a children's book, and Percy Jackson is, so the language is going to be different, but I think the sentiment remains the same. So, the Percy Jackson quote from The Last Olympian, The real Clarice looked up at the Draken, her face filled with absolute hate. I'd seen a look that intense only once before. Her father, Ares, had worn the same expression when I'd fought him in single combat. You want death? Clarice screamed at the Draken. Well, come on! So that's the description of Clarice in battle against the Draken. And then in the Iliad, we have this little monologue from Achilles. In the Iliad, Achilles says, So you thought you could get away with it, didn't you, Hector? Killing Patroclus and ripping off his armor. My armor. Thinking I was too far away to matter. You fool. His avenger was far greater and far closer than you could imagine. Biding his time in our beachhead camp, and now I have laid you out on the ground. Dogs and birds are going to draw out your guts while the Greeks give Patroclus burial. Look at the rage. Achilles's rage and Clarice's rage. The rage of Achilles and the rage of Clarice in these two instances are very similar. As much as they can be anyway in a children's book and like an ancient source. <laughs> the thing that kind of seals the deal with the comparison for me and is like, yeah, this is definitely purposeful on Rick Rorton's part is after their kills, Clarice and Achilles both chain up the body of their opponent and drag it behind the chariot. This is very significant when talking about the parallels in this because it's a very unique thing. It's not something that you see like every day. That's probably one of the more identifiable aspects of the similarities between the Iliad and this specific scene in The Last Olympian. This parallel between Achilles and Patroclus and Selina and Clarice is so... It's so confusing. Um, weird? Confusing? I don't know. It's like, I can't really describe how it makes my brain feel because it makes my brain feel like mush. Because the story of Achilles and Patroclus is, in my opinion, very gay, very queer. It's undoubtedly a story about two men being desperately in love with each other and seeing what happens when one of them dies. And I outlined the details of that fully in my Achilles and Patroclus video, so go watch my Achilles and Patroclus video. Me shamelessly plugging my other videos, go watch the Achilles and Patroclus video, go watch it, go watch it, go watch it. But Clarice and Selena are not gay. They have boyfriends. And while their friendship may have previously had a, a little bit of queer undertones, it's not to the extent of Achilles and Patroclus. We see Selena helping Clarice and Clarice comforting Selena and back and forth and that friendship, but I don't think that that's indicative of them being romantically involved. This parallel between the two stories, the Iliad and the scene in The Last Olympian, is obviously queer to me. And if I didn't know better, I would think it was purposeful, but I know better. I know the series, the author, the tone of the books, so I don't think that Rick was trying to say that Selena and Clarice were gay. Even though we didn't get any <laughs> queer representation in the first Percy Jackson series. We almost immediately get it in the second series with Nico. Well, immediately. The fourth book, I guess. But it is added to the story in a good, well-developed way. Here. We have, um, <laughs> it's my, it's, I'm using it for my mic stand currently. But we get Nico and we get Will and we get queer stories in the second series and third series specifically with Apollo there's a lot of queer stuff happening a lot there's a lot <laughs> and then we also have a book specifically dedicated to Nico and Will which I haven't read yet so don't don't spoil no spoilers I'm trying to reread everything before I read it <laughs> yeah Nico love of my life my heart's companion purposefully puts queer storylines in his books. And even now with the with the book with Will and Nico, The Sun and the Stars, 
and we see it in the Trial of Apollo series and Magnus Chase. So obviously Rick doesn't have any issue with putting queer people into the stories. I don't think that this was meant as queer bait. To clarify, this is not queer bait. This, what Rick has done in this, in with the parallel here, it's not queer baiting. It would have been if Rick did it repeatedly and purposefully, but he didn't. And also since Rick has put other queer characters in his books, he clearly doesn't have any issues showing explicitly queer characters. So it's not queer baiting. There's no argument for if it is queer baiting, it's not queer baiting, period. And that's something that you can easily fall into with the modern discourse on queer characters and queer undertones in works. I need to be very specific. This is not queer baiting. The parallel to the Iliad and the story of Patroclus and Achilles is purposeful though. It's far too similar to be a mistake. If Selena had only stolen the armor and that was the only similarity, it could perhaps have been written off as like a, oh, just a coincidence. But because Clarice drags the dragon behind her chariot, just like Achilles does the body of Hector, that seals the deal for me. That makes it very clear in my mind that it was purposeful. But also, I don't think that Rick knew the queer implications of the story of Patroclus and Achilles when he wrote this. The Last Olympian was published in 2009, way before discourse over Patroclus and Achilles being queer was mainstream. And I don't think Rick was thinking about it. Achilles and Patroclus were described as best friends, the best friends who would do anything for each other. And I think that Rick wanted to show that friendship, that strength of friendship in Selena and Clarice by using that Achilles and Patroclus storyline. Plus it adds a really cool element of things that happen in the Percy Jackson series that directly parallel things that happen in ancient myth. Like we have with so many of the monsters that Percy defeats and fights and a lot of the storylines, we have similarities to Odysseus in the Sea of Monsters. We have similar, blah, 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 blah. We have similarities with Jason in the Argo and the Argo 2, just as Jason and the Argo, the first Argo. The storylines between Selena and Charles and Clarice and Chris are beautiful and I don't think Rick was trying to undermine that. The relationship we see between Charles and Selena, even though we don't see it like explicitly, we're told about it and the way that Charles looked at Selena's picture before going onto the ship, the way that Selena was so distraught over him dying while also being distraught over other things that I won't get into because spoilers, but that relationship and also Clarice and Chris's relationship with her trying to nurse him back to health, him finally being nursed back to health with the help of Dionysus, and then them beginning a relationship like that. I don't think that Rick was trying to erase that at all. And I can see how it would be read as queer, but I don't think that that was the intention behind the parallel. The Percy Jackson universe is so unique because we get that representation that we want and need as queer people. We have so many different characters and queer people and people of color and different storylines and disability recognition. That's really important and that's really something unique about the Percy Jackson series. And I might do a full video on that because I was just, actually, I was just talking to someone on Bumble about this. Guys, the conversations I have with people on Bumble are the most, like, intellectual conversations I've ever had. I don't know why, but that's just the case. I don't, <laughs> it's, it's wild. Anyway, for the Percy Jackson series, we don't have to grasp at these tiny little gay straws of a queer storyline because we have actual gay hay bales rolling around in a field in other books. Does that make sense? We don't need to make Selena and Clarice queer here because we have queer characters later on in the second series and the third series and literally the sun and the stars. And I think that's so important. A children's book, a middle grade novel that has this type of representation, not just for LGBTQ plus people, but for people of color, for people with disabilities, for a lot of things, for body size stuff as well, for men, not so much for women. With Frank, there's a whole thing. I could go into it, whatever. Maybe another day. <laughs> that's what I wanna talk about. And that's kind of my conclusion is that it's not gay and it wasn't intended to be gay, but inevitably it does have queer parallels. And I just wanted to point out those parallels and make them known and then say, no, it's not gay, because Clarice and Selena are not gay. 
well maybe they're bi but like not not in a way that they're both they both have boyfriends they're not in a relationship with each other yeah that's what i wanted to say um yes <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video i had a great time making it and writing the script for it um i have a run apple for you here if you would like it it's next to my bed so that every morning i wake up and i smell run apple because i don't <laughs> it's literally like 9 p.m yeah i'm experimenting with different times of day to record these well i wasn't going to but i did anyway because i waited too long and so now it's dark out as you can see and i can't close my curtains all the way because i have a plant up there now um which you also can't see maybe you can see there we go hey yeah that's everything thank you so much for watching this video i love you so much please drink water take your meds take a nap eat three meals three and three snacks if you can if you have a bed with four i know three meals and three snacks is hard sometimes but make sure you at least have three meals have a wonderful rest of your day or evening or if you're taking a shit right now have a wonderful rest of your shit and I love you and <laughs> have uh, yeah bye <laughs>